Hey, what's up YouTube? I am finally ready to do a full review for you guys. Don't worry, I'm not done with the coverage. I'm just gonna do my overall uh, review for the last week and a half that I've had this watch. I have absolutely loved it. Yes, there are some dislikes and a couple of disappointments, but it is far outweighed by the satisfaction and awesomeness I have received from this watch. Uh, the Galaxy Gear S3, man, what can I say? This is the watch that pretty much just does everything. It's like having a smartphone on your wrist. As far as a smartwatch goes, you always think, um, man, do I need a smartwatch? Is that something I really want to spend my money on? Um, do how, do how do I implement it into my life? I have a smartphone, I have a tablet, I have a computer. Um, how connected do I need to be? Is this just a novelty item? To me, I thought all of those things um, and to be honest with you, I have not seen a smartwatch that was actually worth my money. They've been out for what, four years now? And I'm just now buying one. I haven't even bought a fitness tracker before because I just don't feel like there was a one that was complete enough to attract my money. Until I saw this, when I saw this hit the streets, I was like, man, take my money. I got to have that. And um, the Gear S2, they almost got me with the Gear S2, but I just, I just wasn't quite there. Uh, but I saw this and I just had to have it. The size was perfect and that was what was wrong with the Gear S2. The size was just a little bit too small. I would have picked up the uh, the classic version in black, but it was just a little bit too small for me. Um, this one's perfect size. Uh, as far as size comparison, I guess we can go ahead and say we're knee deep into the review right now. So as far as size comparison, I got my G-Shock here. This is a watch that I wore pretty often. Um, it's you know it's a G-Shock what, what else can I say but as far as size comparison you see the G-Shock is actually thicker in size and it is about the same um, about the same footprint so as far as size comparison there you have it uh, there's a G-Shock right there and for those that say this watch is too big maybe it's just too big for you because you know I'm a guy who's 240 pounds roundabout and I'm five foot ten and muscular so wearing a dainty little, you know, fitness band or watch was just not my thing. Uh, I prefer something with a little bit more size on it just so I can fill up my, my wrist and, and uh, forearm area uh, just to look a little bit more hefty or manly on me. So that's why I like the Gear S3 because they, I, I do think they appeal to the man in this version and I think they appeal to someone who is a little bit more active in the outdoors. Not necessarily fitness, but just, you know, a roundabout gentleman, kind of a renaissance man kind of watch. So um, for those that say it's too small or too heavy, I think you're complaining about it a little bit too much. That's why they still sell the Gear S2 for the people who want a smaller watch because honestly, it's, you know, it's, it's very similar in technology and what they both do. Uh, I just feel like this one has a little bit more to offer. But let's get into durability. Now, as far as durability goes, I will say that um, I have not banged this thing up on purpose. I won't be doing any drop test or nothing stupid like that. This is my watch that I spent my money on and I'm not gonna break it for nobody on purpose. <laughs> you can go to another channel for that. But as far as durability, I'm gonna start off with the band. I have experienced one little scratch here um on the buckle there's nothing minor this probably come from me you know running up against something real quick and this um this uh black coating has actually scraped off a little bit it actually adds a little character to the watch so i'm assuming that will happen to your face you know you don't go around scratching this thing up on purpose or you know it's it's metal it's a metal object so once it scratches it is scratched for good uh there's nothing special about the coating it's it's a typical um, black coating that you would see on any watch so don't expect anything spectacular there uh, people have complained about this ticking sound I'll put it up here can you hear that there's a ticking sound there um, and that ticking sound comes because it's a rotating bezel okay it, it is what it is let me move that text message there um, it's a rotating bezel and it is what it is it's floating on you know maybe a couple of bearings or something so that's why you have that it's two plates of metal that are not contacting each other and they don't contact until you tap it but if you're not tapping it on purpose and you're just using it like you typically would you will rarely ever hear that clicking sound from the two pieces of metal hitting each other that's the way it's designed and i don't think there's a design flaw in that at all so that's okay with me as far as uh, build quality and durability uh speaking of build quality um i think samsung did a fantastic job you got your uh your heart rate sensor there and whatever else sensor that is but as far as uh, build quality it is water resistant not fully waterproof i do believe it's water resistant uh up to five feet for about a half hour and uh honestly 
you know, washing your hands, taking a shower, stuff like that. You know, that's the, you know, washing your car. That's the kind of stuff I would do with this watch. You know, don't go scuba diving with this thing. That's just silly. It's written on the box that it's just not waterproof down to like, you know, 300 levels below sea level or anything like that. There's a stainless steel case. Uh, it's fully stainless steel. So you will have a little bit of weight there. And I actually like that because I, I like to feel like I got something on my wrist. Uh, as far as the casing goes and the buttons, um, I don't think you've ever noticed, but they're in this coating, the buttons are actually either a metal or plastic, I can't even tell, but they do have this little grippy rubber uh, texture here. This is actually like an, a rubber inlay, so it it's, adds a little bit more grip to that button there. All right, and then you have your, your microphone here and your speaker here. Um, that's all that's to be said in the casing. As far as the bands, of course they are interchangeable. This is the one that it actually comes with. It's uh, the black silicone. It's actually pretty comfortable. Uh, it doesn't breathe at all. Of course, it's a solid silicone. So if you want something that's a little bit more breathable, then you're just gonna have to change that out yourself. But as far as the band goes, I believe it's a good quality band. I don't think it's, it's made cheap or feels cheap at all. And they're easy to take off. They have this quick release lever here so you just snap it off you just pull that little pin right back right there you snap it off just like that and then you just snap the new one on just like that it's a 22 millimeter watch band so they're interchangeable uh i would advise you get the quick the ones with the quick release a uh, little lever or switch right here that way they go on off and easy because uh, you'll have to use that pin if not. But yeah, you can put any 22 millimeter band on here that you wish. So I've traded it out for a more sophisticated looking leather one right here. Now let's talk about design a little bit. It's almost kind of weird to talk about design on a watch like this because you can actually change the design of your watch on the fly. Anytime, any, any time of the day you decide that you want a different watch, you can pretty much have it. Just change the face or change the band. Samsung actually gives you plenty of faces to use. So you can go through here and some of them that are uh, factory installed, you can actually stylize them and change the different colors of the faces or the hands if you wish. Uh, some of them uh, actually have interactions in them, like the one that comes on the watch. You have a stopwatch there. Um, it automatically goes into a stopwatch. Some have direct interactions with uh, specific apps. Uh, but like I said, you can pretty much have any face at any time that you want. Um, as far as the design of the body of the watch, I think it's consistent with any other sports watch out there uh, with, with a kind of a classic or a sophisticated look. Uh, very consistent. Um, there's been plenty of times where you could look at this watch and not even know that it's a smartwatch. And that was something that was important to me because I didn't want to walk around with uh, a smartphone on my wrist that actually looked like one. I wanted the technology, but I didn't want that, that geeky look. So it's not square. It's not different looking. It doesn't necessarily stand out. It's just a very, very handsome looking watch. And so when we talk about style, that's pretty much it. You style it the way you want to. You got, you've got this baseline to work with and you can style it any way you want. Now let's get into some apps, man. So this is where I actually get disappointed. Uh, yes, this is a uh, Tizen operating system that we're running off of here. So uh, the app store is kind of limited. Uh, we'll go into some factory installed apps here. You'll have access to your Samsung email, text messages, phone, S Health, which we'll go into in a little bit depth later. Uh, music, um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Reminders, oh, I actually love this app. You can actually go in here and put in reminders. They don't, it doesn't sync up with your phone or anything, but it, it's straight on the watch. You can go ahead and put in reminders and it will remind you of everything you need to do right on time. It is very intuitive and uh, easy to use. Uh, there's your schedule. This actually works with your, your Samsung calendar or whatever you have connected to it. We'll go to the next page. Uh, you've got a built-in weather app. There is S Voice. Arrgh! If they would only just work with Google just a little bit, I really do wish we had Google uh, integration into this phone. There's your Alto um, Alti barometer. This thing is actually pretty awesome. I don't really know how to read it, but it actually tells me like when pressure drops, when you, when you set it up, it'll tell you when the pressure is dropping and you need to grab an umbrella, dude, because it's going to rain on your face. Um, I actually really enjoy that. And then you have your, um, your photo gallery, which I think is kind of a silly app to have on this watch. Um, and I'll get into reasons for you know some of these apps why I think they're silly in the first place But that's to me. That's kind of silly to have on watch uh, your alarm, which is pretty important world clock uh, find my phone That's a great one contacts uh, Samsung pay um, Please check out my review on Samsung pay um, Samsung pay on this watch has been phenomenal uh, It has not failed me once in the multitude of times I've actually used it and it actually to me works faster than Samsung pay on my Galaxy S7 or my Galaxy Note 7. So it actually has sped up my checkout time. Uh, your calendar, which has actually come in kind of useful. Uh, the layout is pretty good. 
voice memo works very well, uh, with the exception of S voice. Um, the speedometer, I have not had a chance to test out. Um, and then you have a stopwatch and a timer. So, and these are some of these apps I've actually uh, had to install myself. They didn't come pre-installed. Now the timer and stopwatch, this is where I start to talk about disappointments. This is a watch. So its first function is to be a watch. I feel like the timer and stopwatch should actually come pre-installed and integrated in the system somehow. There should be widgets that actually, as you go through this uh, rotating bezel here, um, to circle through your widgets on your this is basically your home screen These are different home screens if you compare it to an Android or or Tizen phone There should be a stopwatch widget here. There should be a timer widget. What I've had to do is add a widget and Go in here and it, there's a short app shortcut widget here, which I've had to actually put um, My my timer and stopwatch on I'm actually a fitness instructor So this was actually pretty important to me to have a uh, you know a good timer and stopwatch but Samsung, I do believe you failed in this department is having it ready, readily available as far as being a watch and having watch functionality. There should not be, um, uh, yes, I understand that's an app, but um, it should be integrated in the watch a little bit better. Uh, there is one face that I showed you earlier that has a stopwatch built in, but it's not the uh, timer or stopwatch app. It's just built into the face. And some faces actually do have timers or stopwatches built in, and that's cool, but honestly, I really do think there should be a widget or some better access to to getting to a, a timer let's talk about the music app okay there's my Tupac California love right there um, now listening to music on this thing is great it actually has a pretty good speaker on it and I have gone out running with uh, without my phone and just listen to the music um, on the stores that they have here for you to download but that's just it if you have uh, if you have a collection of mp3 that you can actually uh, download to the phone you're good to go uh, they there's four gigabyte of storage on here, but about two and a half of it is taken up by by the software and, and other apps. Uh, the good news about that is the apps that you install in here are relatively small, so they don't take up a lot of space, so you don't have to worry about that. But that's still not a lot of room for a whole bunch of music. This is where I think Samsung failed. Even though this is the LTE version and I have unlimited data, what good is it if I can't stream music? Yeah, I know we're supposed to be getting Spotify, and this thing actually comes pre-installed with... Uh, with the pre-installed version of uh, iHeartRadio that only works with your phone connected because it's actually streaming from your data plan on your phone, not the watch. So I'm assuming that Spotify is gonna work the same way. Uh, I, I, I strongly believe that they should let you stream music from this thing, but then again, I get it. With the carriers, if you're streaming you know, loads and loads of music from a $10 uh, data plan, then yeah, that's kind of getting it in on the phone companies, but that's an issue between Samsung and the data carriers. I believe as consumers, we should be able to stream music directly to this thing. If you're gonna call it a standalone device and it has music on it, let us stream our music from here. As far as apps, I like Audible. I love to listen to, uh, to Audible books as I run or walk through the neighborhood. And uh, as far as app selection, Audible is not on here. You can't have Audible uh, either with your phone connected or uh, as a standalone app in here. And of course you can't stream. So it'd be nice to have Audible integrated in here. More listening apps that are actually in the watch that you can use without having your phone tethered, tethered to this thing so you can truly be free of your phone uh, as far as music goes. But it is nice to have this on here because I do have probably you know 30 or 40 songs on here that I actually like. So if I need to go into beast mode for a quick run or something, I do have something to work with. So Samsung, get on that, man, because you know I, I feel like we're getting cheated a little bit here. You know when you tell us we have unlimited data, you know on a plan, you know T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon. Um, yeah, that's kind of like so <laughs> we can't do anything with it. You know what I mean? Anyways, now let's go into S Health. Oh man, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time here because I really like the way they worked it into this watch software. Not only into the watch, but also into the phone. Back in the day when S Health first came out, I, uh, I tried it out and I didn't like it because I felt like it was in beta and it just wasn't good enough for me. But uh, I'm glad I had to revisit it due to this watch. Uh, it's, I mean, it's heavily integrated into the software. Um, they've done a great job, so don't sleep on that. But I really love it because now you can actually challenge people to step in contest, I guess you would call it. Uh, or step challenges uh, and you can actually challenge multiple people and keep up with it on this watch not only uh, within the S Health app but also in the widget and on some of the faces it'll even show you in like live time what what the other person is doing as they upload anyways so um, I really do like let's let's go ahead and go through all these um, these widgets that are embedded into the uh, into the S Health app so you got your calories here there's no t oh, oh yeah it will tell you kind of tell you through the day what you've done if you just kind of you know click in there it'll tell you how busy you've been right 
And as you can see, I'm a fairly active person. I've been doing some stuff, man. All right, uh, let's go, let's see here. Let's scroll. All right, 14,533 steps today. Uh, three floors, because it's got that altimeter on it. Uh, let's see here. You can start your workouts. Let's go into these and see what kind of workouts we have. So we have, uh, oh man, they got pretty much everything that you would see in the S Health app. Uh, machines, treadmill, lunges, let's go. Uh, I think there's more in there. Uh, no, let's not do that. Oh, it actually tells you how to do a squat. That is crazy. Just in case you did not know, let's hit okay. All right, uh, no, we're not gonna do squats. I actually wanna see, um, And then we have star jumps. Let's see here, uh, Pilates. Let's see with the star jump. Let's see if we can get one of the little animations going in. Oh wow, it'll tell you how to do a star jump. That's crazy. I never noticed that before. We're learning this together right now. But then of course you can start it and then uh, you can set your target for you know how many reps or just a basic workout or the duration of time you wanna do it for. Um, let me see what, oh wow, what wrist you've worn it on. So, I mean, they've really gone into detail and really worked this in here really good as far as, you know, the different exercises. All right, so in my challenges, uh, I am first among all my friends. There's my heart rate. Now, as far as the heart rate sensor, uh, this thing is actually pretty doggone accurate. Um, I tested it with my finger on the back of the phone. I've tested it at the drugstore just to be just to be sure. And, um, but as far as like reliability, uh, you actually do have to be pretty still. Uh, and you do have to snug up your watch a little bit. So if, it, if your watch is a little loose or if it's even dirty back here, make sure you have it cleaned off and you're not super sweaty. And then you can take your uh, heart rate with this and it'll work just fine. Uh, you, can, you can actually track your water and caffeine here. It looks like I'm slacking. And uh, then you can go into some of your settings. But S Health has been a really great experience on this watch. I have actually abandoned all my fitness apps that I've, that I've used and just, I just use S -Health, S Health because it works. Now going into Samsung Pay, now I will tell you this, Samsung Pay is in a league of its own as far as reliability and functionality uh, at your terminals. Uh, it is the only one I've, well, I can't say I've tried Apple Pay before. I've never tried that, but I know Apple Pay doesn't work everywhere unless you have one of those NFC uh, enabled machines. However, Samsung Pay works almost anywhere. Uh, Android Pay, I've had my complications with it, so I've pretty much abandoned it. Uh, I really do like Samsung Pay. I don't have it set up on my watch anymore because, uh, for the purpose of this video, but basically you hold this button right here and it launches you right into Samsung Pay and you just tap and, and you go. I mean, it, it just works. I mean, there's really not a whole lot I can say about this. I do have a video about Samsung Pay on this, on this watch. So I, I definitely suggest you check it out uh, once you get done watching this review. It has been a great experience and I have absolutely loved it. Man, it's so cool. Especially when you go up to the terminal and people say, hey, uh, Apple Pay doesn't work here or our machine didn't set up for that. And then you go, tink, and then it works. And they're like, oh, I've never seen that done before. It actually does not support uh, loyalty cards and gift cards. It's only uh, your credit cards and um, your banking cards uh, for the time being. But I'm pretty sure Samsung is going to get right on top of that so we can actually just uh, lose the little key fobs we have and stuff like that. Uh, but as a, as a whole, Samsung Pay is a great experience on this watch. So to talk about security with Samsung Pay, um, it is actually activated by a pin. So once you've installed Samsung Pay on this and put your cards on here, your pin, you just must have a pin. There's no, uh, there's no options for that. Uh, as soon as you take the watch off your wrist, the watch just knows you do not have it on your wrist and it just will lock itself. And then you have to put your pin to get back in, which is awesome. That means people can't just find your watch if it fell off or yank it off your wrist and go, you know, drain your bank account or anything like that. Uh, that and that brings me to, um, the security as far as sleeping. Uh, I noticed that it'll go into a dark or deep, deep sleep mode when you go to sleep. If you wear this thing while you sleep, it actually does track your sleep actually fairly well. I have been getting some terrible nights of sleep lately and uh, this watch has actually let me know. It's kind of rubbing it in my face like you didn't sleep good at all, homie. Uh, try, try better next time. <laughs> but yeah, it does actually track your sleep very well. But during those sleeping hours, while I guess it's because you're motionless or because there's not any activity on your phone or the watch itself and your heart rate dropping, because uh, it does monitor your heart rate throughout the day uh, if you choose that setting, uh, it actually will lock. So therefore it's it's locked while you're sleeping. So, you know, people can't necessarily tamper with your stuff. If you decide to take a, a nap at work and it's <laughs> it's on your wrist, you know, your coworker can't go up to you, you know, get on your wrist and see what's going on on your, on your phone and your watch. So yeah, as far as security goes, uh, the security is there. It does have a locking device on it. And as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty solid. Now calls and texts have actually been uh, quite the experience here uh, in a really, really good way. 
Uh, we'll talk about text messages first. Let's see what I got up in here. Uh, let's go into my Amazon shipping text. So uh, this actually comes directly from my phone. Now, once again, I do have the LTE version, so uh, it'll it'll port over text messages from your phone. And when it's in a standalone app, and also uh, when when someone sends a message to your uh, to your watch line, it'll actually come through here. And of course, you see your contacts here, and there's your compose right there, where you can actually literally compose a text. Um, let's go in there here and uh, look at the Amazon shipping. Um, let me see. What did I order? Oh, some more watch bands. Okay, so we'll do a review on those when they get here. Uh, they should be delivered. They should be delivered tomorrow, Thursday the eighth. Good stuff. All right. Uh, let's go into reply. Let's look at how we can reply to a text. All right. Of course, there's S voice, and you know what? I'm not even going to go there because S voice is just not my favorite. I will not promote it, no matter what. Uh, but do we, <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, Sam. Sorry, I, I gotta, I gotta let you know how how bad that is. Um, but there, then there's some pre-installed ones, and that you can actually, uh, these are actually ones that I have actually put in. The ones in blue are ones that were actually pre-installed, and then the no worries, okay, great, and okay, awesome, and these uh, emojis are actually ones that I put in there uh, for just you know just my readily available responses to stuff for quick response. Uh, you do that via the app. Okay, um, and then of course you got your emojis and it supports a ton of emojis. Okay, you got all of them. That is all of them. All the ones that you'll see on your phone. Let's scroll through all these. Let's have some fun. Oh man, that dude is messed up and this dude is freaked out. Okay, uh, let's see here. Yeah, pretty much every emoji you'll see on your phone and yeah, they spared no expense when it came to emojis. And then let's get into uh, responding via text. Um, so here you can actually write by hand and you can write hi. Just like that, and it actually recognizes it very well. And if you turn the bezel, you'll get your other uh, input options. So uh, let's do, hey, um, let me see here. I space am doing. And you can select there. Uh, we'll do, uh, we'll say we're doing fine. All right. All right. Yeah. So the text, uh, the, I mean, the texting actually works really well. I've actually uh, t typed out quite a few texts on this watch just pretty much on the fly without without um, going to my phone. Phone call quality is absolutely great. You can talk on this thing and do the dishes and the person you're talking to probably won't even know that you're actually on a speakerphone, let alone a watch on your wrist. Um, I have really enjoyed making my phone calls on here. And to be honest with you, it's also cool just kind of looking like James Bond or uh, Dick Tracy talking on your watch phone. What did he tell you on the state heaters? I think it was like 13 or something like that. 1300 yeah, that's what I was showing. I just wanted to make sure you did the right thing on it. Yeah, is there any yeah, wiggle room on that? Like, I, can, uh, I can help you out on it a little bit. Uh -huh. um, it, it, may not be, it may not be much. Okay. I can, you know, go about 800, 1300. I can probably get Now, for those of you who do not have the LTE version, yes, you will have to have your, um, your smartphone attached uh, or tethered via Bluetooth to get those phone calls and make them and stuff like that. But if you have the LTE version, don't worry, man. You can just leave your phone at home and you can also call forward all your phone, all of your mobile phone calls to your watch so you don't miss a single thing. Uh, check out my call forwarding video on that. Next, let's go ahead and get into uh, the battery life on this thing. Now, if you're anything like me, when you get a brand new device, you're gonna wanna play with it for like the first two to three days and you just cannot keep your hands off of it. Uh, so during that period of time, I'm gonna let you know my battery, my battery life absolutely sucked. And it was my own fault because the screen was on and I was using apps like it was nobody's business. But uh, when you actually leave this thing alone and you're not goofing off with it all day, it actually will last you about two days, okay? So you can actually not charge it overnight for one night. If you wake up, if you wake up in the morning, charge it to full capacity, which takes about two hours uh, from zero, uh, it will get you through about two days. But then again, you know, you can always get another charger. I do have a video about another charger that I got, an additional one to have at my office, just in case, you know, I forgot to charge it or something like that. But Samsung boasts about three to four days. I say on average, especially with the LTE version, you're gonna get uh, no more than a day and a half to two days out of this thing uh, with typical usage. And that's, you know, using, you know, a couple of the S Health options and, you know, you know, timer and, you know, some stuff like that. Even making a few phone calls. I mean, I really do use this watch I use a lot of features on it and for me to get a day day and a half out of here is actually pretty good in my opinion and I don't mind charging it overnight now rounding out this video I guess you're all wondering should I buy this thing 
uh, period, if I've never owned a smart, uh, if I've never owned a smartwatch before, my answer to you is uh, yes. This is a no-brainer, especially if you're a guy who likes a, a nice size watch on your wrist and some with some great functionality. Uh, yes, there are a couple of letdowns here, but I know Samsung is probably going to be working on it soon. Uh, but as far as this watch right now, I feel like it is a finished product. I don't, I don't feel like it's in beta or anything, or it's missing a whole lot as far as you know hardware. Uh, software can always be improved. As far as uh, I mean, as as far as the processing and software stuff like that, it's great. But as far as like you know, app stores and stuff like that, that can just be done with an update. So this is a very refined watch in my opinion, and it's definitely well worth the money. Now, if you already have an S2, whether it's classic or or the sport one, should you upgrade? My answer is they're two different watches. It's not even called an upgrade in my opinion. It is called getting a different or new watch. Uh, <laughs> one is a lot bigger than the other. Uh, one of them has a lot more functionality than the other. And it just depends on the look you're going for. So I can't you know, give you an answer on that. It's just really personal preference. Price on this thing, if you get the non-LTE version, the Bluetooth model, it's gonna run you about 350 sticker price. Uh, if you go to a carrier, it's going to run you about 400 because of the LTE. Uh, I would say if you have the opportunity, get the LTE. That way you can get the absolute best and most out of the watch. But should you buy it? I say yeah, even if you've already got an S2. Get this one because, trust me, uh, once you get this one, you'll probably not pick up that S2 anymore unless you're going for a specific look. As you've seen, I've dressed this watch up with different bands and different faces so it can be used in a lot of different environments. I think you're going to be really happy with your purchase if you decide to get one. Now let's keep in mind that this is a watch and that's it, that's its primary function. Um, you know, with, with downfalls, you know, I've even contradicted myself a couple of times saying that there's not a lot of apps. And what I really didn't mean by that is functional apps for a watch. You know, if you're going to have a, a smart watch with music string, with music on it and capable of, you know, playing music, then, you know, I think we should have some streaming apps. I believe there should be, you know, lots of functional uh, stopwatch and clock widgets, things of that nature that are conducive to a watch. Now, you know, you gotta be careful what you ask for in a smartwatch because you think about this, it's a watch. It's not supposed to necessarily, you know, show you pictures or even take pictures. Now it's cool if it does, but you know, just cause it doesn't take pictures or the picture quality isn't that great or the, the picture is round, that, that, you know, that's neither here nor there, it's a watch. Um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, having games and stuff like that to play on your watch, like, who does that? You have a phone for that. You have a tablet for that. You have a PlayStation console for that. You don't need that on your smartwatch. A uh, smartwatch is supposed to be something that you use for, you know, quick glanceable notifications. Uh, the fact that we can actually text on this thing and you saw how I did it, it was, it was fully functional. Uh, to me, that's a miracle in itself. Uh, that's not something I would necessarily expect from a smartwatch. It's, it's, it's on your wrist. I mean, you actually do have a phone where you actually need to type out an email. But this thing is actually capable of doing it. I don't necessarily need to be able to turn my lights on and off with it or control my TV or start my car or anything like that. I think those are really great things to have, but uh, I think we should give more consideration for what we ask for in cases of a smartwatch or a wearable device. As far as the price tag, I do believe it's competitive. I mean, we spend good money on watches and uh, this one is well worth the money in my opinion. Uh, anyone that says otherwise, you know, you can come see me about that because, you know, I pay plenty more for other watches that don't do half the things as this one does. This one actually doesn't just keep time. It does a whole lot of things. So, you know, the price tag on this thing to me, in my opinion, is very fair. But until the next time, I ain't never claimed to be an expert in this kind of stuff. I'm just doing reviews and I hope to see y'all at the next one. But before I go, make sure y'all tap on that like button and smash on that subscribe button.